Yeah, it's beginning of the fan. They say I need to open up, I guess I let you in. Yeah. Yeah, What's going on, everybody? I am Georgia Dawn in the building. I got the black girl himself, Fenura. How are you doing today? Is it Fenura? Fenura? It's Fenura. Fenura. You can just say I don't Fenura. think everybody knows how to say that. I don't know. They know. So it's Fenura. Fenura. I think I say Fenura. That's fine. Cool. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So definitely thank you for coming along to be a part of this interview. We have a lot to talk about. We do. So um, it all started, you know, at the illustrious Jenkins High School. You know, you were, you, you went to girls, right? Mm -hmm. I went to like five high schools. Why? What, what, what was the change? What was going on in your life? <clears throat> I mean, between sports and then I'm actually moved to Atlanta for a minute. So okay. I went to Atlanta High there. So you done went to girls? Mm -hmm. I could have sworn you did. You know a lot of people that go to girls though mm -hmm. that really support your music. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, dope. Okay. So high school, were you doing music then, or what was no, your life like the sports? Yeah, just music. Okay. Sports. So what was the change? Like, at what point in your life were you like, I think <coughs> I'm music? I mean, I then was writing music since I was like 12, 13. I was bullshitting with it, mm -hmm. like taking it serious. Me and my cousin just writing shit. They really. Really honestly started with hate letters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like yeah, I just get my emotions out. So you like big on like writing? Yeah. Okay, dope. Uh with everything with music, you have a project out and you're actually about to release some so surprise music mm -hmm. for your supporters. Yeah. So um what was the like uh response like from when you first dropped? I know a lot of people was waiting for it. Yeah. So when it finally was released, like how did people kind of feel and what did they tell you? I mean, I got a you know, good feedback from my feel like Myself, I could have pushed it a little bit better, but it was like really a compilation more than anything. It okay. was shit I already had dropped. Okay. Like, on sound like Chino and stuff. Yeah, yeah, so I just compiled it together. And just okay. Like that, so. so, we're going to get down to the nitty gritty. Pushing your music. Like, let's talk about what, like, do you feel like you're in your own way? Because I feel as though, like, a lot of people talk about, oh, I got all this great music. It's like you build that anticipation, and you drop it, and then it's like, all right, y'all go and y'all do the work, and y'all listen to it, and I'm not going to push it anymore. So is that kind of what happened? Yeah, or? that's kind of how okay. I feel like I can do better with mm -hmm. promoting my stuff, but you know, they're coming with money. You know, yeah. money it really get the root of everything. So. so do you feel as though if you had um, more of a, like, a budget or investment with that, it would be bigger? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the only reason why I ask that is because everyone is always like about the shoulda, coulda, woulda. It is about are you hungry or are you not? Yeah, so this time around, like, what's your game plan? Like, how do you really <coughs> want people, like, like of course, new audiences to learn who, what your music is? Because it's going to be on all streaming platforms, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so, like, what's your game plan if you don't mind sharing? What's my game plan? I, uh, I kind of like to let it do its own thing, but since yeah. I went through the distribution company, uh -huh. Distro Kid, everybody should go fuck with that, honestly, in my opinion. Uh, I saw that I made money off of it, yeah. you know, the little that I made, but it yeah, was like, I really something. did, yeah. You saw, you was like, this is doable. Mm -hmm. you know, I didn't really it. put the, you know, the work behind promoting it, so I was like, okay, well, maybe if I take a different approach right, and actually right. pay people here and, uh, you know, promote my stuff, it'll be a bigger turnout, okay. so that's what okay. I learned. Let's go ahead and talk about paying the play, because some people, <laughs> they're just like, I'm not paying for nothing, <laughs> I'm not doing it, I'm an artist, y'all should be paying me, I need to be getting paid, da 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 So let's talk about the realness, like, let's be uncut, uncut raw, all that, just let's talk about your stance, or maybe your initial stance, and now your stance now on paying for you know performances or paying for beats and paying for uh pr whatever the case may be what's your stance my stance on it is like you got to pay for them and anything mm -hmm. now they got to pay for oxygen nowadays so it's kind of like you know it's really just how far you want to go with yeah. it yeah you know? and it's but somebody's providing a service for you so let's also talk about being used or like people not mm -hmm. respecting you as a client like, have you had those moments where you're like, you put money in somebody's pockets and they just like trying to yeah, act trying like... Trying to toy with you. Yeah. yeah. Even outside of music, you got dealt with that a lot. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like an oncoming thing. But uh, I feel like you just kind of got to feel the person out that you're doing business with. Mm -hmm. You know, make sure they on their P's and Q's because you can't really expect somebody to go as hard as yeah. for your stuff. Yeah, then you... For you. Okay. You, so. so who is your team as far as business goes? Like, do you have <coughs> management behind you? Like, what's I, your day-to-day -day, like? I don't have any management. It's all me right mm -hmm. now. And, you know, people I know, like Joey, he puts my stuff for me. And so, you know, just other artists who, you know, I know fuck with my shit, but I don't have any management now. I'm actually supposed to be going down to Valdosta and talking to the minor label down there. But I really don't want to sign mm -hmm. to anybody. I really just yeah. have to manage me. So what's your reason for not wanting to sign? I like to hear people's, um, 
the yeah. reason why they don't want to sign because it was a while ago people was wanting to get signed okay. um so why did you not want to i'm trying to i would say i'm on the fence with it because you sign and you know you can get that promotion that you yeah, need yeah, yeah. but the you know the downside to that is when you sign it's like you kind of gotta Mm, sell off yourself. You can't really be who you want to yeah, be depending on what they want to do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like a, I feel like <clears throat> when it comes to being signed, it just has to make sense. But yeah, if you're yeah. looking for management, that's probably the best way to kind of start things up yeah. and everything. But the reason why I ask is because a lot of people, um, I just feel as though when you have a manager, when you have a team, it needs to be people who really know you. Exactly. It needs to be people who really like can really say that I was here from when it was really nothing. Yeah. It's, it's like no different from if you pop right now and you get a whole new team and then people like hooligan who you're affiliated with they're like well damn and like you yeah, know we was up. you know we was your with your so speaking of hooligan let's talk about your affiliation with them and who all it comprises of okay you know it's joey uh rico vibes man it's common sense of course uh, it really started <clears throat> oh i really didn't know these guys mm -hmm. but me and Bruce started working together like what was it yeah two ago so we was Ooh, working mm -hmm. okay. we was working together and he did music i heard some of his shots like that bro really tough and he had his own thing going yeah. and that then so really it was just every day at work we would just really okay. motivate and panning off each other i did and shit and that's that's how it came about and i actually okay, cool, ended up making up and boys are pretty cool so what was the motivational conversations like like i know because i know joy rico is very passionate he's actually back from you know <laughs> taking pictures for us right mm -hmm. <laughs> but like what was the motivational side of the conversations that y'all would have because i feel like people on social media may know y'all as the music like the artists and y'all like to have fun and stuff yeah. but that serious side of you all like what's that like it's like it's really i don't want to sound cliche but it's kind of like a <clears throat> big brother little brother type thing like you know he come to me for advice and this time i come to him for advice mm -hmm. and it's just kind of like it's really not it's motivation, but it's really just staying positive yeah, and optimistic yeah. at the end of the day, just knowing that, you know, the shit not going to be built overnight, you know, you yeah. got to put work in, mm -hmm. so it's just that type of thing, and just keeping everybody level-headed, so. Okay, so let's act like we, like, can tell the, the future. So let's say, hmm, That's a good one. five years from now, what is your living situation going to be like? What is your day-to-day going to be like um, when it pertains to music? Five years from now, the yeah. same as music. Honestly, to be real, I really don't see my myself making as much music as I do now in the next five years just because I know I don't necessarily want to be a rapper. Like, I'm good at it, but I see myself being more so, of, you know, somebody who has a label in a sense or a star. So you're looking at the business side of it? Yeah, because okay. everybody want to rap. Like, it's really an oversaturated mm -hmm. market now. Like, mm -hmm. everybody rapping now, and it's not even, it's more. Rather than it is beat makers now, so it's like yeah, um, that's very like true. That. That's that's a good point to put out. So more so with you, you're trying to get into this market, learn as much as you can, and then end up crossing over and becoming like the exec. Definitely. Okay, dope. So looking at like being the label exec, looking at um, manage. Would you manage or? Yeah, I met all okay. really. Uh, I really want to look into A and R. Okay, dope, dope. Music, so. dope. And it's just okay. outside of rock because I actually used to play instrument and shit like I can read sheet music and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So but you know what? Work. Like, and then this may be a fun fact. I work with a lot of ANR on um, Atlanta, and I was telling one of my homegirls, I was like, when I was younger, you know how they took, asked you in school, like, what do you want to be? First, I said some outlandish shit. Like, I was like, I want to be a paleontologist. That's like you did like bones and shit. That you, I just heard somebody <laughs> say it, and I just caught on. So after that, I realized I wanted to be. I think I said I wanted to be a lawyer. Then I said I want to be ANR. And I used to always tell people I wanted to be in because I did music from fifth grade until high school. I didn't. I probably stopped doing music um, when I went to college. Mm -hmm. So like literally four years ago, I just literally just put the extra down. So I used to always say, well, I know how to read music. I know how to. They was like, we don't read music. We don't do that anymore. So A and R has really changed a lot. Like it's not really even about composing. Mm -hmm. They listening to beats that a producer makes and the engineer does, and it's just like this is good for that artist. This person wrote this session. Da da da. It's not even what we kind of think it is anymore like everything is just changing so yeah. that's just a fun fact for anybody who's looking to be an artist or a star because people ain't doing that no more yeah, um but i did want to get into like performances and stuff i recall you performing at the artist showcase uh, so a little bit i do remember from that so album. yeah we i heard about the, the the aftermath and everything but as far as preparation like what what kind of vibe do you have to be in before you hit the stage like what's like probably two essentials what's your starter kit 
<laughs> Once you start a kick, like I said, you, know, you can you can you know, uh, I mean, what's uh, the friendly uh, version. Nah, I'm gonna give y'all the wrong. I'm gonna cut the version because that's how I know how to do it. But my starter kick, uh, definitely uh, a blunt mm-hmm. or a prizel lime. If you don't know what it is, then go look it up. Uh, what's that word one more time? A prizel lime. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's just really. I really don't need anything. Uh, Per se, like I couldn't go do it sober because I'm more of a you know introvert, so it kind of things like that take me out of my shell. Yeah, to bring me back in. So, so okay, there's a difference of being an introvert and being shy. Are you shy, or are you just more so <clears throat> like a laid back all the time? I'm laid back all okay. the time. Okay, you're born and raised um, in Savannah. Yeah. So, if you could tell, let's say someone who someone who's watching who doesn't know anything about Savannah, Georgia, <clears throat> what is one thing you would tell them? It's shitty. No, it's like, shitty. No, no let's, shitty. let's talk about it. No, it's shitty. No. It's shitty. It's not me. It has its shitty parts, but it's actually yeah. very beautiful. I mean, it was the capital of mm-hmm. Georgia at mm-hmm. a point in time. Yeah. So I think people forget, you know, forget the about real that. fact. The real yeah. history. And that's why you know it kind of looks similar to Atlanta downtown in some aspects. But mm-hmm. uh, in my opinion, it's nice. It's just really nothing to do here yeah. once you do damn near everything. Yeah. But you know, it got yeah, a lot of good like, eating places downtown. If you really want to have any fun, it's really between Pula and the downtown area, in my opinion. Okay, so you don't go out, I'm, I'm assuming? Nah, I kind of, yeah, I partied out. Did you ever, like, so you did, like, party and stuff? I mean, my partying was, you know, I was on my own since I was, like, 18, so I was always had my own shit, like, type thing. So mm-hmm. we used to have parties, we had house parties, so I really didn't have to go. Out and oh, yes, right. I don't really like going out anyway because mm-hmm. it makes me feel out of my element. So okay, I prefer that. to be in the house. My phone. So wait, how you? What, let's let's talk about it. What's up? You want to be? You are artist. Mm-hmm. You want to transfer over and you want to be the exec and you want to be the manager and you want to do A and R. A and R's have to go to these events, these club appearances. They got to be around people. Definitely. But it's all for a greater cause. That's so the money though. Like, how are you gonna handle this thing? Because oh, you, you gonna be the top exec. You know what I'm saying? I know you're gonna be in a private little area, but you're still not gonna be secluded to the point where you you going to be out of your element. Definitely. So how are you going to handle this, Mr. Exec? I mean long as there is a monetary cause, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm fine with being out of my element. But I mean, just going out, just to do the same shit and post on the wall, let's see the same people. Yeah. And that's not my thing. I so. understand. I understand. So what? Um, what about what about Savannah keeps you here? Cause you you live here, right? You still mm-hmm. live here. That's a lot of people move away um to pursue their dreams, like I did. Um, so what keeps you in the city? Like what drew like kind of drew you to stay? Mm-hmm. Really, uh, I actually left a minute ago, okay. and I came back. But what drew me to stay was really just me. Uh, I actually want to leave, but I know right now it's not, you know, time for. What's the reason for you wanting to leave? <clears throat> uh, I actually, well, you know, I went to school for horticulture, so I'm actually trying to pursue that, and I can't grow weed. Here, so yeah, I see you just got um certified. Yeah, got certified. Okay, so um that was like back in June. So as far as that, like, how long was that to take like the master program? <coughs> yeah, like it was a year. It's basically based on how fast you want to go. It's on your pace. So mm-hmm. I was supposed to be done. I had till December to finish it, but I did. I'm the type to go and knock shit out. So I went. Okay, to that's good. That's what's up. So, yeah. That's what's up. So y'all need a dispensary plug. Hit him. Oh, oh he's. Me. He, he the plug, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you know what I'm saying? It's going on YouTube, man. He's not yeah. the plug. Thank you. But he's the plug. <laughs> <laughs> I was going, I was going to change it up. But no, he, he's certified, you guys. Like, he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. He knows, like, you know, I want to say it was called Bud Tending. Yeah, that's, something yeah, like yeah, that. that's, so, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, so he knows what's going on, you know, like, he's the legitimate plug. Yeah, I am. He's not the, the legal one. He's the legal <laughs> plug. That's what we're going to say. So... I do want to know what's in your cup. You're not going to tell me. I told you it was a beverage. What kind? It's a legal beverage. Is it a legal beverage? A legal. I mean. Don't answer that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so what is this new project going to be about? I know I'm ready to hear it because I know I think the first one. Well, I am. I actually am. You don't believe that or something? Like, no, I was just kind of surprised. You know, it's still taking what? me What? <laughs> I mean, I'd be surprised when people actually let's, tell me they like my music. And let's stuff, talk about it. Right. What's the title of your upcoming project? Because I know we're going to be able to find that. Uh, T-Bob, and that's just an acronym for the beginning of the So Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. So I like the fact that you got, you know, everything. I think your last project, it was more so about you. 
like mm-hmm. the title, everything more so showcases mm-hmm. you. So I like the fact that you think about your projects and stuff like yeah. that. So, um, anything else you want to let the people know about you? You know, I, I feel like people may look at you on Twitter and may think that they know you, uh, but no, you'll never yeah, know me exactly. From that shit. So, uh, what do you want people to know about well, Fenura? If you judge it for Twitter, then you just all fucked up. Yeah, anyway. I, I feel like, like you should come to the horse's mouth mm-hmm. with um, me. I'm probably the cool, one of the coolest guys you ever meet. Up. I'm really laid back. Like I know I say a lot of shit, but I'm outspoken. So Twitter is kind of like a place. That's kind of like a journal for me. Mm-hmm. So that's just a place where I go and just air out because I really don't talk to people. But it's kind of like a contradiction. So you want people that I say exactly, you're not gonna but, speak to me. Oh, I mean, if I see you, um, yeah. but I mean, I'm blind, so I might, I might just walk past you by accident, because I... By accident on purpose. Nah. <laughs> nah, I just don't get my glasses, so it'd be, I don't be wanting to squint. Oh, you blind? Print. Yeah. I, I mean, I can see, like, everything is clear right now. How can people connect with you, and when can we, um, I don't want you to put a date on if you're not ready, but when can supporters um, be expecting some, some new heat while they're listening to the, the uh, old heat? It's on very soon, very soon. Okay. Like all everything is done. I just got it. It'll put a drop in January, but you know, next. you gotta trust the process too. Yeah, everything true. happens for a reason. Yeah, you can't true. rush stuff. You can't rush greatness. Yeah, that's why I was just like, so, it happened for a reason. So. Mm-hmm. But I got the music back, and it sounds good. Okay, so it's definitely ready. But. So we gonna by the time this interview is out, hopefully we'll have a link in the bio with his music. That's how we gonna do this. Mm-hmm. Cool. Definitely, that's cool. Okay, so how can people connect with you and follow you? Uh. Sh- that's a shame. Oh, at him over there. Hold on, really, it's at him underscore over there. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's how you follow me. But uh, you can actually go to my music page because I'm pretty sure that's what you're more so interested in. And that's you can just type in Fenura, the D A Black Goat, B L A K G O A T. So I do thank you so, so, so much for finally coming to have a sit down with me. It's been like four months. Been, yeah, it's been no, I think longer. Really, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. been doing this shit a long yeah. time ago, but yeah. Well, better late than never, you know what I'm saying? And we do appreciate you so much, and I want everybody out here to just check him out, listen to his music, follow him, do what you have to do. It's been connected. This is Georgia Doll with Georgia Media Agency signing out. Peace.